الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ولبيته من التبع سنة أجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأغضة من لساني يفقه قولي uh, الحمد لله uh, Today we will do Surah Al-Mulk which is Surah number 77 in the sequence of Revelation and it is Surah number 67 in the sequence of recitation now and it has uh, it was a Makki Surah all revealed in Makkah and it has 30 verses in it um, and this surah talks about uh, Surah Mulk. <coughs> um, uh, it is about the kingdom of the universe belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the creator of all. So Allah is basically the owner and king and uh, as of this world as is being explained. And lower heavens is decorated with the stars, which is what we say. Uh, <coughs> and it mentions about the the people who will be in the hellfire, they will wish that only they had listened to the call of Islam and uh, they will regret that uh, they would not have been among the inmates of hellfire. Um, and no one can help anybody against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if Allah wants to protect someone and nobody can uh, benefit a person or help a person if Allah does not want to help him. Uh, with this, uh, is it? It's a short surah, and uh, uh, inshallah we will uh, proceed with the verses. Bismillah. Uh, uh, and this is the surah. I think when I join Sabah's Zikr program, they always recite Surah Mulk and Surah Waqiyah, yeah. and also yeah. um, first ten and uh, last ten ayah of Surah Kahf. Yes. Every day. They recommend. Yes, they are I just wanted to share. Yes, thank you. Uh, just to add on to this, the Surah Mulk is the one which protects a person uh, from hellfire. Um, accordingly, uh, this should be recited every night. Uh, companions of the Prophet, after when Prophet told them the, the honor and dignity of this, because what verses are in there, it describes the day of judgment. And uh, the person will be saved from the calamity or hardship of the Day of Judgment, the one who recited. Um, let's listen to it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tabarak al-Ladhi biyadhi al-Mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. In the name of Allah. Most gracious, most merciful, glorious is the one in whose hand is the kingdom of the whole universe, and he is powerful over everything. The, the one who created death and life so that he may test you as to which of you is better in his deeds. And he is the Almighty, the most forgiving. Who has created seven skies, one over the other? You will see nothing out of proportion in the creation of the Rahman, the All Merciful. So, cast your eye again. Do you see any rifts? <laughs> Then cast your eye again and again, and the eye will come back to you abased, in a state of weariness. What? So verse number 1 through 4, Allah subhanahu wa is talking about uh, glory be to Allah, in whose hands is the dominion of all creation. And he is, have the destiny and power over everything. So, ala kulli shay'in qadir. Qadir means power or also being ability to write or mention or add the destiny of anything. 
Allah is the one who created first it is mentioned that Allah created mouth the death and then he created life so death is a creation is a, it because in the day of judgment death will be uh, brought in the form of lamb and that will be slaughtered in the in the in the plane of uh, of the day of judgment and then life what he Allah created will be eternal life and eternal punishment <coughs> So there is a reason of this life. Allah is saying, I have created death and life so that we can test you. So for us, uh, something just uh, you know, incidental to mention for the purpose of knowledge to understand. Uh, that who among you does the good deeds? Uh, and he is almighty and forgiving. Um, in Islam, uh, this, the death is also not considered a bad thing as long as it has come to meet a person or a person dies as a believer or as a as as a, a friend of Allah or as a prophet or messenger of Allah surah maryam we already have read about that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, peace be on the day when john the baptist was born the day he died the day he will be resurrected so his death day is a day of peace and then jesus isa alayhi salam Peace be upon him, son of Mary. He said that uh, peace and blessed is the day when I was born, the day I die, the day I will be resurrected. So the death is not a something evil in Islam as long as it is a uh, it's it's in the state of believing and being a person of faith. Now, uh, death is also uh, is mentioned in a many aspect, like as we go to sleep, it is said that you are in a state of death. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring your soul back into your body and be as we sleep. You can see how quickly I, uh, body, soul leave the body when we are in the state of dream, which according to the brainwave testing, we have uh, stage one, two, three, and four. When we are in stage four, it's a rapid eye movement sleep. Apparently, we are having dreams. I think that is the time when it, how long it takes that our soul is, is according to Islamic belief that it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we see the dream when we see good <coughs> dreams. It's from the uh, angels and good news or the blessings which we get or we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bad dreams, what we call nightmares are from the Satan's when the soul is traveling towards Allah in the heavens uh it uh, it gets scared or is uh, given a, a fearful thought so just to understand an example is in the quran uh, allah says death is a form of a uh, disconnection from the body and when we are living and we sleep then our soul is allowed to come back to the body so it is kind of a little very detailed complex thing so there are certain things in islam we celebrate birth as then Quran, the birth is a is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can tell, nobody can predict that this baby born will be good, bad, or right or wrong, or righteous or unrighteous, or evil or great. But it is a considered a form of blessing, every baby's birth. Now in death aspect also, Muslims celebrate death in a way which is called ors or just to explain, not that I said I'm supportive or not supportive, but just the logic behind what is Urs, which is very common, which is also called uh, anniversary in English or Sanawiyya in Arabic. Sanawiyya means yearly. So what happens is any time when a person dies, a righteous soul like a prophet or a waliullah or awliyaullah, or parents, our loved ones, when they die every year, we remember them, which we have done during our session, that when we had a year passed about our, our loved ones, when they died, we made a special supplication, we made the special dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their forgiveness. So what is that? The soul is considered feminine, and the urs comes from Arabic word of uh, arisa, aris, aris and arisa. So Arisa uh, is the soul, is the feminine, and Allah is considered masculine. So when the soul returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the death day of a person, it is considered that it has met where it was supposed to be. So in, in some scholar example is given that when somebody have a daughter and she is wedded away in a more appropriate righteous way, so family invite people for this wedding day, and that is considered a, you know, a, a, a good day where where people are invited and celebrative. So when soul meets with the Lord, it comes to the place where it is supposed to be in the seven level of the of the uh, barzakh, that is the another world, which is a parallel, a curtain behind which is this world and 
uh, sorry, before the curtain is this world and behind the curtain is the alam barzakh Barzakh means curtain and that is the grave, life of grave. And after that grave life will be the day of judgment and then uh, other will be done. So what happened when the righteous soul meets with Allah, it is a happy occasion. The soul is happy and celebrative that my Lord, I have finally met you who I was being asking. So this is death defi definition, which I am understanding and I have learned that death is a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who, who is the most beautiful, the most uh, caring, the loving, the creator, and, and the, especially the soul, which is uh, believing soul is going to its Lord. It is not going anywhere lost. So this is not a moment of sorrow and grief. It is actually a moment of celebration. And this is what is called the urs. This is what the word urs came from, that the soul, female, feminine soul meeting with the masculine God, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also without image. So then it is being brought. So when that soul of a pious and righteous person dies, it is brought to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says to the angels, uh, he, he greets it, accept the soul and then commands them to take it to the station, which are different places. Like it could be in the grave of his or her own. It could be at the well of Zamzam in Mecca. It could be in the seven heaven level, which is each of the prophet is living. Uh, so this is soul is, 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 is the real thing there. And body sometimes disintegrates. Body does not have any connection. Yet it is the soul is celebrative. So this is ala in That is the alien. Uh, somebody, maybe you need to turn your uh, mic on to mute. There's a, a noise coming, please. Um, so soul, when it meets with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so some Muslim traditions are that they every year they come back to the day when this person or the uh, the wali Allah, the friend of Allah or the known uh, or loved ones of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they died. So they remember this is called yearly gathering. It is called urs, which is again something this is uh, not uh, appropriate. Other is Islamic uh, fiqh, the fuqaha, the uh, Islamic scholar, they think it is mustahib thing to do because when you get together what we do, we uh, read Quran, we make supplication for that person or the female or male or that uh, soul that our father, forefather, or our cousins or relative or brothers, sisters, and then so and so forth. And also people feed them, people talk good things and remember those good things and remember our time that we will be one day dying also. So this death is a is a celebration in other words it should not be taken as and again certain deaths are not death in other words a martyr is alive allah says do not say a dead person they are living but you cannot comprehend it so this is something uh, very very uh in unusual that we should understand about our faith that death is not a curse as long as a person have died in a form of believer so there are 40 grades of martyrdom and one of the highest one is of fighting and dying in the cause of Allah in a battlefield. But then a person who is died of a drowning or the one who died of a stomach pain or the one who is dying on childbirth, the one who died while studying, while going to institution or gaining knowledge, or the one who died while trying to make a living for their family or protecting others. So there are 40 prophets, 40 grades of martyrdom. So they are alive. Allah says, do not say they are dead, they are alive and they are getting risk and sustenance and they are celebrating in the alam barzakh And when a soul dies, it arrives to their loved ones. When it arrives, the loved ones ask them that, oh, how is this one? How is that one? So why would they remember? Because when we remember in this worldly life for them that, oh Allah, forgive their sin, oh Allah, grant them places in paradise. And also a believing soul after they die, they are given power. They are given some strength and they can supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we will come to this topic, we will discuss that by with the Quran, it is been uh, mentioned that how uh, people invoke uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or, or ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by invoking the name of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that my Lord, 
uh, accept my supplication uh, in the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allazi khalaq al mawta wal hayata to hayat, I mean this worldly life, we came from non-existent to existence, that is Allah, and maut is that he takes us back, and that's we do not exist after when he takes us away. Uh, in the physical body will be rejuvenated, recreated or resurrected in the day of judgment from the particles into back to be the full whole being and then the day of judgment will be established that who among you did the righteous hasana beautiful amalan actions and deed like whatever we have talked about that believing in Allah and angels and prophets, scriptures, day of judgment hereafter. And we should see this verse is revealed among the kuffar of the Mecca. They did not believe in resurrection after death. They didn't believe in existence after dying. Uh, next uh, word is Hual Aziz al Ghafur, and he's almighty and forgiving. And then next thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described that what we see the seven skies, Allah says, or we see skies. Allah says he created seven is skies uh, layered one upon other according to the hadith the first sky is like a, a, a shell of egg compared to the second one and that is compared to the second to the third is like an egg shell so each one of them till the seven skies and then there are four angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are holding the throne of Allah but to show the majesty of Allah it will be eight angel will be bringing the throne of Allah down to the earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi khalaqa sabaa samawatin tabaqa ma tara fi khalqi rahmani min tafawut That you would not find any uh, defect. So ma uh, tara, you do not see in the creation of the merciful any defect or any uh, disproportion. Farju al-Basra. Then Allah says, look again up to the sky. Hal tara min futur? Do you see any rift or any defect in the creation of a skies which is around you? Basically, if you could say there is a bubble and it is like a ball, we are in a ball and multiple balls and seven layers over that. This is a assumption because we do not know what is how it is after and there are doors there are gates with which we pass from one sky to the second sky to the third to the fourth as prophet went to the uh, miraj he described that angel jibreel knocked the door and there are guards on each angels uh, or uh, each is each sky uh, so then further Allah says, Thummarjal Basra. Then again, second time, uh, look at the sky. Karatain, Yan al Basar. So your eye will return back to you, Khasi Hasir, in the state of abased and weariness. Means your eyes say, I cannot see past further, but the, whatever I see, I do not see any defect in the sky. And we have now much more knowledge with the modern technology that we will, we are seeing around the world. And this is amazing. And then now turn the conversation about those who are disbelievers to their Lord, the one who deny their Lord. For them, there is a punishment of the hellfire and what a bad and evil place they will end up.